Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the show, Lil Mike Fight Night. I don't have my Lil Mike with me. Um, it's in the mail, but I keep losing it. Anyways, I'm Bear Evans, and today we're going to be going over UFC 302, the top finishes on the last three fights. Talk about some things maybe um, you missed while watching it. If you didn't watch the fight, it's going to be a great kind of refresher, cliff notes type of uh, class here. And then also we're going to be going over the press conference and some things that were said by some of the fighters as well. And then just kind of continue the dialogue. This is for someone who is a diehard fan. This channel, I'm trying to bring people together, a community of just fight fans who can just open the dialogue and just keep talking about fighting. Like, do you ever watch a fight, guys, and you're sitting there like, oh my gosh, this fight was so crazy. Do you want to talk about it? Or you want to hear someone's opinion on it? But, you know, all they really have is like Chael Sonnen, uh, freaking, you know, Ariel Hawani, like, you know, you don't necessarily, and Joe Rogan, which I love Joe Rogan, but it's like, I was just trying to hear a voice that was maybe more like a regular person, right? With a little bit of fight experience, that's what I'm trying to bring to this channel. So, with that being said, let's get right into it. I want to start with the um, Holland uh, versus Michael fight. Now, on this, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you really quickly about it, and then I'm going to play it. Holland puts him in an armbar. He's looking at the ref like, you're going to call it? You're going to call it? Nope. He gets his hooks in deeper. He really squeezes into that armbar. He basically makes Michael's elbow go the other way. Uh, Michael does a quick tap. So notice his hand. He just barely taps the leg or the knee. It's almost the exact motion. Pretend this is Holland's knee. I want you to look for that after Holland really gets it in there, okay? He taps. The ref, you know, stops the fight, obviously, because he tapped. And then Michael proceeds to, like, push the ref off him and was mad, like, why did he call the fight? So with that, guys, the first question I have after watching this video one time, do you think Michael tapped? Yes or no? Let's go ahead and click play. You saw he pushed the ref off him too. He taps. He's like, ref, get off me. I'm like, dude, what is your issue here? So what I think happened is he was in a lot of pain. All his elbow tendons are, are, are getting, is he going to Snap City is what that's called. Snap City. Um, shout out to the Hodge Twins from back in the day. Uh, old school bodybuilding channel. But anyways, his elbow's literally the opposite joint. He does a little tap and then the ref needs, oh, maybe the ref didn't see back into the fight. So what happens is there's little moments when you're fighting. I've never been into a MMA like UFC fight ring, but I have been with a lot of experience in the ring with someone boxing on the amateur level. So when, when that happened and you're fighting, there's times, man, like let's say like you just get really good, you know, get hit in the liver and uh, it's like, oh my God. And like for two seconds, you think like, you know, you, you want to quit or you want to go home or you just want to take a knee, but it's like, no, you're still in this ring and you're still fighting, right? Well, this guy showed that he was in a lot of pain in a compromising position. He tapped, but on the professional level, that's just something that like you need to work out. Do you want to be able to break your elbow and, and fight or do you want to just tap, you know, when you're smart enough to know when your body has reached a limit? Whether or not, regardless he tapped or not, that ref called the fight beautifully. I would have stopped it right then and there. His elbow's probably already messed up. I cannot imagine how long that will take for him to recover. When I tore my um, elbow, uh, I tore a tendon in my elbow, it took like three to four months just to heal where I could start like snapping my punches again. So with that being said, guys, let's get into the next video. Um, we're gonna go over Costa versus Strickland. Joe Rogan calling this freaking wheel kick two seconds before Costa does it. And then we're gonna get into the last uh, highlight of the fight, okay? Let's go ahead and click play. When does he pull that wheel kick out? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Says it. Literally, it was like he was, okay, Joe Rogan coach, and he throws the kick. Guys, what do y'all think about Costa? This is kind of my next discussion with this. You know, since the Kamar Usman fight, he got knocked out, you know, just starch. He's not that same bulldozer, you know, the eraser, why they gave him that nickname. He, to me, now is a guy who gets very, which he's always been like that, but it's like he gets tired by the first or second round, which, yes, did he go all five rounds? Absolutely, but was it a boring, low activity fight? 100%. Sean, you know, he stands really wide, so not like a boxing stance whatsoever for boxing. Imagine a piece of paper, um, you wanna be like this, you know, so it's less harder to hit. But what he does so well is even though he's wide, you know, and he, he does his little catches his kicks and his punches and his body shots, he also does the Philly show really well kind of for how squared up, like even for me, it's kind of awkward, like even to like, to roll it over being this squared up. And so that's one thing he does really good. It's a very Sean Strickland type style because he's bringing Philly shell, kind of a Muay Thai stance as well too. And um, I, I just, I it, it confuses a lot of fighters who aren't used to that consistent 
forward pressure. Sean Strickland's like a zombie. He doesn't have the highest output, but he's going to continue to pepper you with that jab and then try to throw that right hand over the top. When Sean Strickland gets more excited and can taste the kill, he'll try to throw like an uppercut kind of out far out wide, but you'll see this weird almost uppercut hook thing he throws really well too, and that's normally when he tries to finish something. Fun. So, uh, finish someone. But with Strickland, his coaches were calling for more activity, you know, the fourth round, fifth round, and I think that is true. He needs more activity. Like, my my theory was, okay, he always drags people in the deep waters by like the fourth or uh, the fourth or fifth round, why not then turn it up there like 20 to 30 percent? So I'm going to show you guys the last minute of the um, or the last 30 seconds of the Strickland versus Costa fight. This is something Strickland does whenever he's fighting someone who's not good on their back foot. Think Israel Adesanya, think Paulo Costa. These guys aren't really used to being on their back foot too, too much. I'm not saying Israel Adesanya is bad at it, but we saw the constant forward pressure of Sean consistently frustrating and confusing people. So, with this, um, Sean, what he likes to do is like the last 15, 10 seconds, he likes to turn up a little bit. And that is, it just makes an amazing fight. Um, go ahead and watch this, and I just wish he would have been like this like a minute in, right? Let's go ahead and play. What was that? That jumping, uh, well, jumping front kick? That was freaking awesome. Sean Strickland just absolutely teeing off and freestyling the last 30 seconds because he's so frustrated because his dance partner won't go nipple to nipple, dick to dick with him. Um, that's what Sean Strickland's saying. If you don't get that, um, it's something that Sean Strickland likes to do the man dance, right? We're going to meet here in the circle with our hands up and we're going to do the man dance. He didn't have a good dancing partner that night. But um, I thought overall that last 30 seconds really made up for the fight. Now guys, let's talk about the real main event, the people's main event, the everything. I thought Strickland Costa was gonna be it. Costa never turned on. Makachev and Poirier was the opposite of what I thought was gonna happen. By the first round, I'm like, oh crap. We already know this. We've seen it before. Benoit St. Denis, except Benoit doesn't have the cardio and conditioning, and he's not Islam Makachev, right? Um, you know, him really getting manhandled the first round, and I was like, man, he's gonna lose, he's gonna lose, he's gonna lose. Then, once he started getting more comfortable, Islam had success too, but once Poirier started getting really comfortable with his hands, got some really nice elbows on his face, cut it up, got some really nice punches on Islam, um, and he really had such impeccable defense. You could tell he learned so much from the Khabib fight, as in he got a chip on his shoulder to go learn, 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 and train, you know, with those body locks, with the Dagestani handcuffs. I know Khabib loves a single leg, but Islam Makhachev did a lot of double legs um, during this fight. And so, um, you know, when it came to the double legs, Poirier just about defended all of them. But anytime, you know, he threw a kick or Islam got a single, that's generally speaking when he can trip him, grab that leg, walk him off, you know, and trip him and get him on the ground. But Poirier got up just about every single time and he continued to have success with his hands. The only thing was on this, on this fifth round is when he gets um, submitted. And a lot of people are saying he gave up. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Like, he didn't try his, his hardest. Um, that's what a lot of people are saying. I want to watch this with y'all, and then let me get a, a second opinion on this, because to me, Islam Makachev has never had a test this hard. You can say Armand Sarukian, but guys, that was just a high-level grappling match for three rounds. Got that, these guys went to war. Poirier and Islam went to war. No one, even the guy who beat Islam like on his fourth UFC fight and knocked him out with a head kick, I, I'm telling you, it, the Poirier put the hurting on Islam like he has never had before. So with that, let me go ahead and replay this because I always have a different opinion after I rewatch the fight. Okay, first off, Islam does that choke so well. Think about, he, he finished Oliveira the exact same way, man. Um, I, 
I think it's a Dars choke. I'm not super. It's either a Dars or a, a modified version of that. But like where he puts his hand literally, like he has to choke you through. He's not even just around your neck. Like he's choking you through like your effing arm and your neck. Cause he's pushing the carotid so tight on each side together that it makes you black out. And Poirier actually went to sleep. Um, when Islam let go of him, he, he knocked out. And so it takes about, ten, I mean, six seconds on your carotid to hold it for you to black out. Um, if you ever like kids playing around and grabbing, you know, your friend's neck until they blacked out. I don't know if y'all did that as kids. Definitely something that is real. So um, going over the press conference now, guys. Um, first off, let me go a little bit more into this fight. I'm so sorry. ADHD tangent. Where Dustin messed up, I don't think he gave up whatsoever. I, I think where Dustin messed up is when Islam grabbed that single leg. It's kind of funny that was the fight finish with a single leg because that's the only time Islam had su success the whole time. So he grabs that single leg and Poirier, had, you know, he's trying to balance, but he grabbed his right hand and there's a, he sees an opening right there with his, his head right there up straight where he wanted to hit it, but he didn't throw that punch because he was scared that Islam was going to go ahead and trip him because when you throw such a big hook, especially like Poirier, he's not, he's not punching to not knock someone out. You know, he wants to put a lot of pain there. Yes, he has great balance. So like a throw correct hook, you know, when you throw a hook a lot of times, it stops right here, right? Or, you know, an uppercut. But what can happen, let's say he throws a hook and he gets off balance. It, you're sweating, you're barefoot in boxing, you have shoes and things like that. It's a lot harder to get off balance. Here, you've been sweating for 25 minutes. So have like four other people. The ground is not velvet. It's like an effing canvas tarp thing. It, it gets slippery when wet. And so it's a lot different, guys. But um, I, I don't think he gave up on that choke. I think Islam really is that good. Drop your comments down below. Do you think I'm wrong he gave up? Let me know. I love hearing from y'all no matter what y'all's opinions are. Next. I want to go over the press conference. Dana White saying that Islam Makachev is not pound for pound, that it's crazy when John Jones is still alive. I mean, still fighting. So I want to hear y'all's opinions on this too. And this is the last topic I have for the video. No more little clips. It's just me talking with our dialogue. So with John Jones, um, he's only fought one time since 2021. We're in 24 now when he you know, beat Cyril Gaon and got the heavyweight champion. Before that, he was out for like three years, two years. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it, I believe it was three years, but I'm saying two just in case I'm wrong. Now, uh, so he had just been really, really inactive. So it's basically, what, one fight in five to seven years or five to six years. You know, for me, I think John Jones should have vacated that belt a long time ago. Think about Prohaska. Think about Jamal Hill. People who were champions and they relinquished their belt because of injuries. John Jones, I believe, is just holding up the weight division. They're literally letting Tom Aspinall defend his interim belt um, versus Curtis Blades because he's not fighting John Jones and he's still out. I'm like, how the F do you have a fight scheduled for Stipe versus John Jones and then you still have a guy defending his interim belt. So to me, John, I mean, to me, Tom Aspinall technically is the real champion and, and Jones's belt is just kind of like a prop. He's like the unicorn of the division. Do whatever he wants. To me, that's not a champion. To me, a champion is who fights the biggest and best guys. I really wish he would just relinquish that belt until he comes back. And, you know, if he really wants to fight Stipe, I, I get it, but fight, dude, earn your time in the heavyweight. Dude, you made... He is the GOAT. He is forever on GO uh, Hill for what he did for light heavyweight division. But also him beating Cyril Gaon was in, in that type of spectacular fashion was awesome too. But I'm like, man, I just wish he was more active. And we keep talking about like letting guys not be pound for pound when you have guys who are fighting who are active all these times. Like Islam has fought like 11 years in the time that, that John, I mean 11 times in the time that John Jones has fought once. Do I think John Jones is the greatest fighter of all time? Absolutely, but I think the P for P should be for active people, and John Jones to me right now is not active. Now, if John Jones comes back and he's like, you know what, I'm gonna fight Aspinall, he fights Aspinall, beats him, then to me, I'm like, okay, now you're really stepping up in the heavyweight division of current killers because Stipe is old news. Like, I'm sorry guys, he's like in his 40s now, he hasn't fought in like three years since he's lost in Ngannou, like he's basically retired. And um, so, it's a little weird that Dana White's like, no, he's absolutely pound for pound. And I think what that is, he's just trying to build up the heavyweight division, make heavyweight again, you know, like the golden days of boxing, like when everyone just cared about the heavyweights. Brock Lesnar, there's a little bit of that in the UFC too in the, in the beginning days. And uh, so I think he's just trying to keep some of that around. But anyways, guys, that's the video. Thank y'all so much for the support. Drop a like and comment and subscribe if you found any value or gain from this or if it was just entertaining. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. It still helps out too. With all that being said, I'm out. Peace.